Okay, so in the previous video, I looked at three different methods for the highest common factor. I'm gonna do some examples here. Our three methods were listing, the table method, and what loses for the highest common factor. So we're gonna do this first one. We're gonna have a look at 15 and 25. Now for 15 and 25, it's gonna be pretty easy to list the factors. In fact, for 15, let's pull this up a little bit higher. We have one times 15 and three times five. For 25, we have one and 25 and five times five. So I'm not gonna write the five twice. The ones they have in common are the one and the five. So the highest common factor is the five. So the highest common factor of 15 and 25 is five. You can also just kind of do that by spotting. They're both in the five times table and there's nothing bigger than that. So let's have a go now at doing B, which is 72 and 66. And I'm gonna try this time for B, I'm gonna try a slightly different method. I'm gonna do my table method. So I'm gonna do my 72 and my 66. It doesn't matter which way around you do those. And I'm gonna start finding the factors of both of them. Well, they're definitely in the two times table. So I'm gonna do 72 divided by two, which is 36, and 66 divided by two, which is 33. So now when I look at these two numbers, the 33 and the 36, I can see they're both in the three times table. 33 divided by three is 11, and 36 divided by three is 12. Now, 11 and 12 do not appear in the same times table other than the one times table. So we're actually ready to go, and we can just find the highest common factor by multiplying together the two and the three. So the highest common factor is the two times the three, which is the six. So the highest common factor of 72 and 66 is 6. Now let's just have a quick look at the alternative method for that. Let's have a look at the prime factorization one, the what loses. So you might have done these calculated, but I'm going to do them on the calculator. I'm going to do 72 equals shift fact. So it's 2 cubed times 3 squared. 2 cubed times 3 squared. 66, 66 equals shift fact. 2 times 3 times 11. 2 times 3 times 11. Now we're going to look at each of these sections separately and we're going to see which one loses. Okay, so the highest common factor. The power of 2, this is smaller than that one, so this is the loser here. So it's going to be a 2. We've both got a 3. This is the loser that we've got here, so it's going to be a 3. And when there's nothing, this one loses against the 11, so I'm going to write nothing down there. 2 times 3 is 6. We got the same answer as this one. So let's try question C, which is 12 and 56. I'm going to do my table method first of all. 12 and 56. I'm going to see that they both can be divided by 2. If I divide by 2, I get 6 and I get 28. I can divide by 2 again, so I get 3 and 14. 3 and 14 do not have a shared times table. So the highest common factor, I'm just going to quickly erase that bit there, the highest common factor is the 2 times 2, which is 4. So the highest common factor of 12 and 56 is 4. Let's do the prime factorization method as an alternative to show you what's going on. Now, 12 squared, I could do it on my calculator, it's just 2 squared times 3. 56 is 2 cubed multiplied by 7. So I'm going to leave a blank bit there, and I'm just going to put the 7 in a new location. So it's 2 cubed. I'm not going to write anything in this part because I want all the numbers lined up. And I'm going to split it into the separate sections, and we're going to see which loses. So between the 2 squared and the 2 cubed, the 2 squared is going to lose. The nothing is going to lose, and the nothing is going to lose in both of these bits. So actually, the highest common factor is just 2 squared, which is 4. So it's the same one here and here, which was our answer. Now, D, we've got 12, 24, and 84. So I've got 12, 24, and 84. I'm going to do the table method, and I'm going to start off by saying that they can all be halved. So I'll divide them by 2 to get the 6, the 12, and the 42. They can be divided by 2 again, so I'm going to get 3, 6, and 21. Then it looks like these are all in the 3 times table. So I'm going to divide by 3, I'm going to divide by 3, and I'm going to divide by 3. Now these have got no common factors other than 1. So I'm going to highlight these numbers, and my highest common factor is the 2 times the 2 
times the 3. 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 times 3 is 12. Ah, so that's got a factor of 12, that's got a factor of 12, and that's got a factor of 12. Let's try it in the other method. So we're going to do our 12, our 24, and our 84. Now 12, we said before, was 2 squared times 3. 24 is 2 cubed times 3. You could do it on your calculator, but I know that one straight away. So I'm now going to do 84 equals shift fact. I have 2 squared times 3 times 7. And we're going to do the idea of what loses. So in each of these sections, the losing power is the smallest power. It's 2 squared. They're the same, so we're just going to write that one down because it's the lowest power that we've got. And there's a blank at the end. That's going to lose. So we're just going to write it as 2 squared times 3. And 2 squared times 3 is 12. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to say that it is 12. Now my last one, 315 and 3675. I'm actually probably going to just do this one using the prime factor one. You'll find the prime factor one is really, really good for big numbers. So for these big numbers that we've got, the numbers are 315 and 3675. 3675. So let's do these written out using the calculator. 315 equals shift fact. It is 3 squared times 5 times 7. Then we have 3, 6, 7, 5. We're going to shift fact. 3 multiplied by 5 squared multiplied by 7 squared. So actually only this one we needed to leave the gap here for the 7. This one we've got a number inside each section. So I'm going to split it into the different parts and we're going to see what loses. So for the highest common factor, the loser there is 3. The loser there is 5, the loser there is 7. So I need to work out 3 times 5 times 7, and we get that the highest common factor is 105. We get 105. Now if you want to, you could do the table method and see that you'll come up with the same answer, but I usually prefer prime factor method for this. Okay, your turn. You've got a few that I want you to find the highest common factor of. Pa pause the video here um, and see what you come up with. I'm not going to do loads of different techniques here. I'm probably just going to go in with which one I prefer for each question. Okay, so A. We've got 63 and 72. I can spot straight away that they're in the 9 times table. So we have 9 times 7 and we have 9 times 8 for 72. 7 and 8 have no more common factors. So the highest common factor of this first one is just going to be 9. Part B, we have 36 and 54. These are pretty small numbers, so I'm going to do a table method. I can spot that they are both in the 6 times table, actually. So that's going to be 6 times table. 6 times 6 is 36, and 54 divided by 6 is 9. Oh, it also looks like they're in the 3 times table. 6 divided by 3 is 2 and 9 divided by 3 is 3. 2 and 3 have no more common factors, so I have the 6 and the 3. So my highest common factor is going to be 6 multiplied by 3, which is 18. So the highest common factor is 18 for this. I'm going to do my 16 and 28. You can tell I really like the table method. I'm going to half them, so I get 8 and 14. I'm going to half them again, so that I then get 4 and 7. There are no more common factors between the 4 and 7 other than 1. So the highest common factor is going to be 2 multiplied by 2, which is 4. So the highest common factor is 4. Now I'm going to do the 15, the 45, and the 105 on the next page. So I can see that they all look like they're in the 5 times table. So when I do 15 divided by 5, I get 3. 45 divided by 5 is 9. And 105 divided by 5 is 21. I've now got the 3, the 9, and the 21. They all look like they're in the 3 times table. 3 divided by 3 is 1, 9 divided by 3 is 3, and 21 divided by 3 is 7. The 1, the 3, and the 7, there's no more numbers you could put outside the front here. So that means our highest common factor is the 5 times the 3, which is 15. And then this one, because these are big numbers, I'm probably going to want to do my prime factor decomposition. So using my calculator, I'm going to break down the 252 equals shift fact 2 squared times 3 squared times 
7. I then have 2079 equals shift fact. And I have nothing in the 2, so I'm not going to write anything there. 3 cubed times 7 times 11. So I'm going to see what wins and what loses. I want to just care about the one that loses for this. So the highest common factor is going to be equal to. Well, there's a blank, so that one's going to lose. There's a 3 squared. That one is smaller. That's the smaller power. They both have a power of 1, so I'm just going to say that that's the same. And then the blank is going to lose there. So I just get 3 squared times 7. 3 squared times 7, that's just 9 times 7. 9 times 7. It's just 63. Obviously, I don't know why I put that on the calculator. So the highest common factor is 63. You know what? I am going to see if I can show you this on the other mode. I'm going to just do it with some division. So we have 252, 2079. I think they're both going to be divisible by 3. You're allowed a calculator, so I'll do 252 divided by 3. That's 84. 2079 divided by 3. 693. I could use my divisibility checks and see that it's divisible by 3 again. So I'll do my 693 divided by 3. That's 231. My 84 divided by 3. That's 28. And then this is where it's hard to spot, but actually these are both divisible by 7. 28 divided by 7 is 4. 231 divided by 7 is 33. 4 and 33 have no more common factors, so the highest common factor is the 3 times 3 times the 7, which is 63. Okay, pretty tough questions, um, especially those last ones, that calculator one. In the next video, we're going to do a couple of worded problems. Found this video helpful? Then why not drop it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. If you'd like the next video in the playlist, you can click here to be taken straight to it. And as always, wishing you the very best for all your studies.